The goal of uh, this class is to introduce the mean first passage time equation. So we are going to discuss how long it takes for a Brownian particle or a stochastic process to hit uh, the boundary. So this is going to be um, part one of this uh, chapter. So let's move on. Um, maybe I would like to give an example, a precise example, before we move on. So suppose we have a domain. This is a domain omega. And inside we have a dynamical system um, where we have trajectories, so the dynamics can be x dot equals b of x plus, uh, let's say, uh, square root of uh, sigma that can depend of x w dot square root of this and so we have stochastic processes uh, this is an example of a trajectory and we are interested in how long it takes for this trajectory to escape, to hit the boundary so of course when you start at position x and you have uh, many realizations you have another one here that will hit the boundary let me change color so that uh, it's become clear that uh, for example let's take the red color and let's do again, we start from x, there is another trajectory and we look where this trajectory uh, at what time it, it's going to escape so if um, we would like to formulate this question we're interested in the time, let's call it tau that's knowing that the, the process starts from position x so we look at the, the first time it takes for the um, process x of t to hit the boundary d omega right condition that the particle is initially at position x so we call this tau of x and, and our interest is to look at the expectation the average of the realization of uh, this process 2 of x and so the way we are going to study this is through the Ito formula I would like to formulate so we have already seen in the previous class how to derive uh, Ito's formula and now we would like to use it so let me remind you that the uh, backward operator L tilde of u is given um, so I'll define this operator and we will see where it comes into the Ito formula this is the sum of uh, sigma transpose sigma um, ij divided by 2 so here actually uh, we don't have to divide by 2 because we took here the square root of 2 in this, so we don't have to, so this is uh, like this and we have to multiply, so let me erase this um, I would like just to erase this division let's do it carefully like this alright, so let, con let me continue writing so we have dd xi d the x j of u so we have to sum if you are in dimension n over i and j from 1 to n let's say the dimension of the space where we are is equal to n plus the drift part which is b i d u d x i So this is such operator for i going from the component from 1 to n. Alright, so what, what if you remember what Ito's formula says, it said that if you are interested in the differential of a function that depends on the process x of t, then we have d of this 
is given by um, uh, this is exactly L star of u uh, dt a star of f dt plus there is a contribution coming from the, the noise term which is what? which is ddf dxi at position x multiply x of t actually x of t multiply by um, this is going to be a square root of sigma so this is a matrix right so um, let's call it this matrix w dw k and so this is the matrix applied to this this is kj let's say and here this is dx ddx dj and so j here so we have to sum of k and j all right so now we would like to integrate um, this equation and actually um, look at what happened when we're going to take the following condition so suppose we choose a function u or function f such that l of u equals minus 1 and u this is for every point x inside the domain so this is for all x so let me erase what we do not need here anymore so let me erase a dimension that we don't have now it's clear that what is the meaning of the dimension all right so now we are ready to continue with this we have this equation with u equal zero for at any point x on the boundary of the domain and inside the domain we choose u such that lx l star of u which is equal to this operator equals to minus one for any point x inside the domain then let's integrate the Ito formula from a point so from a point um, x that hit that is exactly on the boundary minus so maybe let's call this point um, let's call it y so let me write it like this so that it becomes much more clear so I want to start with point so we ended up with a point y so we get f of y minus f at x equals 0 and this is going to be exactly integration from 0 to the time at which we hit starting from x of the operator L star of f ds so this is of course of f of x of s I didn't write everything plus the stochastic part which is integral from 0 to tau of x and, and I'm not going to write this is you know I have to now just take all of this here and, and, and put it back in here and multiply everything ds all right so let's continue on the next page with this so what we now have is I will start with this uh, equation so we start with f of y so by definition if y is on the boundary f of y is 0 because this is how we choose f so what remains is that minus f of the starting point f of x of 0 so we have 0 minus this equals so by definition 
this is um, from 0 to tau of x by definition L star of f is equal to minus 1 so this is exactly minus 1 ds plus integration from 0 to tau of x so the stochastic part stochastic, I'm not writing it alright, now let's take the expectation, let's average over all realizations so I'm, I would like to take the expectation of everything here expectation of this equal the expectation of this so this by definition f is a deterministic function its solution of this equation this equals 0 on d omega and this is on omega this is the, the partial differential equation so this is exactly the initial point where we started at point x so this is minus f of x equals integration from 0 to 2 of x of minus 1 this is precisely minus the expectation of 2 of x plus the expectation with respect to the Brownian motion of 0 to 2 of x of the stochastic part but so remember if we condition this on any 2 of x this is the expectation of the integral of any time t condition that tau of x equals t multiplied by the probability of tau of x being equals to t and then what we have here is exactly um, a function that depends whatever this function that depends on uh, let's call it uh, j or f tilde of t d omega t and by definition this is zero because the expectation of d omega is zero and these two processes f of t and d omega are independent so finally what we have shown here is that if we know how to solve this partial differential equation then f is exactly f of x is by definition the mean first passage time it takes starting from position x to exit at a point here on the boundary so maybe let's let's say a few words and uh, we'll finish with this um, when sigma is not degenerated so when sigma is not degenerated that is it's a uh, matrix which the determinant is not zero is not degenerated then um, L, st L tilde then L star is an elliptic operator is an elliptic operator right so what does this mean this means that um, we'll see in the next uh, in the next slide that I, I, the, the general equation is L still tilde of u equal minus 1 and u equal 0 so this is an elliptic operator so and there's some uh, regularity condition on the coefficient which we don't care here that we assume we have on, on B the field and sigma are sufficiently regular then we know that there exists a solution u of this equation and uh, uh, this equation is uh, actually unique and it's positive by the maximum principle All right, and so and, and we have found here that the interpretation that u of x is precisely this mean first passage time so we will see in, in the next um, classes how to approximate asymptotically u so how to approximate 
how to approximate u asymptotically. Asymptotically means we would like to find how it behaves. Let's say when uh, we have a small parameter, that is when the noise when the stoch stochastic process is dx equals b of x plus square root of 2 epsilon w dot and epsilon small. So then in that case, the mean first passage time, which is u that depends on epsilon, and the question will be, of course, what it is uh, equal to as epsilon goes to zero, epsilon small. So we've seen here boundary conditions. So uh, just to finish with this, u equals zero is the absorbing boundary condition. We can also assume, so absorbing, absorbing boundary condition, we can also assume that part of the boundary is reflecting, that is, you can have um, a zero flux. So in that case, the flux is uh, when you, you uh, have no drift, when b equals zero, the drift is simply uh, du dn, and suppose here we have sigma is the identity, we have uh, d du dn equals zero. In general, when you have the flux, you have to write the flux, which is uh, j of i, which is, uh, um, so again, let's suppose sigma is, uh, we have sigma equals constant, uh, constant diffusion uh, drift, so this is d du dx i minus, so we have minus d du dn minus u, so b i, so the uh, flux condition is j dot n dot normal at any point of the boundary where you have reflection is equal to zero, so this is on the reflecting part of the boundary which is denoted, so suppose here it can be absorbed absorbed and here it is reflected so you have this condition here all right so uh, we'll continue in the next lecture with other property of an other application of um, ito calculus so um, see you uh, in the future class <laughs>